presentation of falling in love um, so that it comes across just right on the big screen um, take after take after take after take until until the director is satisfied well you finally got it right and then and then they move off the stage and then uh, they resume their own life but um, with God, it's not a matter of play acting. It's not a matter of just trying to get it right, take after take after take. Because when you read the lives of these people, you find out that their lives are probably any, probably something far less than what you see on the silver screen. Okay. I want to read... Um, I will start off with um, start off with First Corinthians fourteen. First Corinthians fourteen, starting at verse ten. First Corinthians ten. Uh, four, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 10 through 33. We'll start there. First Corinthians 14, 10 through 33. Reading in the King James reads this wise, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaks a barbarian, and he that speaks shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so you, forasmuch as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding. Also, I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when you shall bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen? At your giving of thanks, seeing he understands not what you're saying. For you verily give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also 
than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be you children, but in understanding be men, or be adults. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, says the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serves not for them that believe, but for them uh, believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there comes in those that are unlearned or unbelieving, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believes not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God, and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a, has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most, by three. And that, of course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak, two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sits by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. Now, this this passage has long been a long standing passage in uh, the church to talk about this manifestation of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Manifestation of speaking in other tongues didn't die out with the apostles, didn't pass on from. A generation didn't come, and then this speaking in other tongues died out. That didn't happen. The Bible says that the promise is to us, is to many that are far, as long as the church age is still going, and we're still living in the church age, this manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues is for everybody. It is, as the Apostle Paul says, wherefore tongues are for a sign. Mm -hmm. Right. And when... An individual receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through them in an unknown tongue. That is a sign to the individual. That's a sign to the individual. And yes, it's edifying to the church also. People get very enthused. They rejoice when somebody begins to learn the art of submission through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You don't get the Holy Ghost under your own willpower. You get the Holy Ghost by submitting to God. And if you want God to speak through you to help somebody else, it's going to because it's, it'll happen because you practice the art of submission to God. Because if I do not hear the voice of God in my spirit, I'm not going to be able to communicate that voice to anybody else. You understand where I'm going there? Yep. Now, um, we're not actors, okay? There, there, there are people that mimic other people's voices. Uh, they're, um, what are they called? They're called... Um, Huh? No, it's people that um, they, they, they can. Mime? 
No, not mine. Impersonate. They impersonate other people. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like people that want to talk like John Wayne, you know, the Duke, you know, and, and they'll say, hey, Pilgrim, I want you to know life is tough, and it's tougher when you're stupid. So they impersonate John Wayne. And in the impersonation of another individual, what they're trying to do is capture the essence of that personality in their own selves and then communicate it through their own voice. They're acting out. We're not actors. Um, I'm reading a book by Mr. Alec Guinness called Blessings in Disguise, a uh, British actor. Um, passed away some time ago. Uh, I guess, yeah. He hates it. He hated it while he was alive, but he was known as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. Yeah, that was, you know, oh, Obi-Wan, you know. That's why. That's how he was known for a long, long time. He didn't like that. Very accomplished actor. But this is what he said about what an actor is. He says, an actor is an interpreter of other men's words. Often a soul which wishes to reveal itself to the world, but dare not. Craftsman, a bag of tricks, a vanity bag, cool observer of mankind, a child. And at his best, a kind of unfrocked priest who, for an hour or two, can call on heaven and hell to mesmerize a group of innocents. Isn't that the movie industry today? Well, isn't that stage performers right. today? They simply want to mesmerize a group of innocent people by calling on heaven and or hell to bring about some kind of an emotional reaction, to bring about some kind of a, a connection. And yet when they pass through the doors of the theater, Whatever happened in there just seems to evaporate on the carpet as they walk into the, into the cool night air or whatever, wherever they're going. And it becomes just a distant memory. And we are so, we are so a part of that environment. We're so, you know, we want to be, we want to be mesmerized by a performance. Oh, didn't they interpret Jesus so well in that whatever. Oh, didn't they didn't they bring about you know that character so well? And in reality, they're just mesmerized. And, and you've heard that word before. Oh, you know, the performance was mesmerizing. You know what mesmerizing means? It just means to to bypass the intellect and tap into the emotions so that you're just cautionary tale there is you're hearing a voice of an actor and the voice of that actor can grab the emotions because that's first and foremost where the theatrical business works they're not interested in capturing your intellect they want to get you in your emotions because if they can get you in your emotions then get you fearful or get you hyped up or get you excited or you they want you know, or help you Feel like you're falling in love just like that couple on the screen. They can bypass your intellect and they can feed you things into your mind that may or may not be right. Because you're mesmerized. And like the apostle says here, there are many kinds of voices in the world and none of them without significance. Many kinds of voices. I, I, I went through this uh, process of dissecting this thing called a voice. And, and follow me here if you will. Sometimes before you ever meet somebody, you hear their voice. You hear a tone. You hear a quality. You hear a voice. 
You may not know who that in, you know, who the individual is that is speaking in that voice. Or you may see somebody coming down the road and there's the initial introduction. And uh, it's like, you know, uh, you know, Olive, I'd like you to meet Paul. Paul? Oh. And I say, glad to meet you. There's a voice. A voice just came out of me and a name was associated with this body. And Olive would, would hear the introduction. He would see the individual. He'd hear the voice. And there would be this connection that would then happen inside of him. He would connect person and voice. And now he's heard a voice. Now he's heard that voice for the first time. And immediately we begin to form connections. Voice, name. Voice, person. And in that voice, when they hear it again, they form a recognition pattern of voice, name, and source. Okay? You, we, we begin to do that. So that you pick up the phone, or, or somebody, if you don't have caller ID, you know, somebody calls you up, and a lot of times, if it's a good friend, I remember growing up, it was this way, Somebody would call us up, we didn't know who it was, and we'd say, hello, and they'd say, hello, and, oh, Uncle Bob. Hi, Mom. Or I would call them, and they wouldn't know the number, and, I'd, and they'd pick up and say, hello, and I'd say, hi, oh, how you doing? What's happening? The voice carries within it the ability to recognize the individual speaking. But you're hearing a voice. And in that voice, there are words associated with that voice. And those words, the words that are spoken, then move to the next phase, which is it begins to form confidence or some other recognition pattern. In other words, people say they're going to be in church. I know the voice. I know who said it. Now I'm starting to form a recognition pattern. The voice I recognize. The association with the individual I recognize. Now the words spoken I recognize. I still know the voice. I still know the person. But now I've got a recognition pattern that the words spoken mean nothing. that sink in a little bit. We can't be like that. Right. You give your word, people recognize, they're going to know your voice, and, and, and a good reputation, a good reputation is better to be had than great riches. We've got to be people of our word. And how do we do that? By hearing the voice of God. By hearing, not just listening for the voice of God, but hearing the voice of God. I want to dig into that some more here. Now, now the voice of God becomes familiar to us. And I'm going to tell you how you recognize the voice of God. I want you to, I think people need to, need to have some kind of a, a tool or some kind of a, a drill, some kind of an experience where you reckon, oh, that's the voice of God. Oh, that's God speaking and that's God speaking to me. I remember the first time I heard the voice of the Lord. Sitting across the table from a friend of mine, Bob Bisking, and I needed some help. The, last, the night before, I said, God, if you're real, I need help. And he began to talk to me about the Bible's real. 
God gave us his word. And God speaks to us on an individual basis and wants us to know how much he cares for us, how much he loves us, how much, how much we're worth to him. God wants us to know who we are in his eyes. God wants us to know. God wants us to be able to bring any questions we have to him and know that we're going to get real answers. God wants us to know just how important we are to him. God wants to give us of himself. God sacrificed himself for us. And it, you know, it didn't take very long for, for Bob to begin to talk about these things to me. And in all of that, that something happened. I began, I told Bob at the end of it, I said, Bob, I feel something in here. I was hearing the voice of God. And it was being conveyed through the words that come from Scripture out of Bob Biskang's mouth. Bob was not acting. He was a true representative of the Word of God and the voice of God. And I, rec I picked up on that. You can hear a voice and not know where it's coming from, but you recognize it. I'm trying to help us. When you feel the, the stirring of the Spirit of the Lord in here, that's God speaking to you. That's God talking to you. God can use a bright, a beautiful sunrise morning. God can use snow coming down on a cold day. God can use a single songbird in a tree on a, on a peaceful in a peaceful meadow. God can use all of His creation to communicate to you through your spirit, which then motivates your emotions. The world doesn't worry about talking to your spirit. They just want to manipulate your emotions any way they can. I heard the voice of God. It is the same for everybody. It is the same for everybody. You see, hearing the voice of God is not the same as just hearing the words of God. As a minister of His Word, and if you are, if you're born again of the water and the Spirit, you're supposed to be a minister of the Word, right? Which means, as a minister of the Word, I've said this to myself: as a minister of the Word, I desire, I must hear God's voice. In every aspect of presenting his word. In other words. Is it the voice of God. Coming through me. Speaking his words. So that somebody else can feel. The spirit of God speaking to them. Just like I did. When Bob Bisking was talking to me. Back in 1979. That, and that happens over and over and over again. And why is this so important? Because when I'm, when I'm preaching, I can tell when the Spirit of the Lord is talking to somebody in this congregation. When the Spirit of the Lord is talking to somebody that's watching. When the Spirit of the Lord is talking to somebody during the ministry of the Word of God. I pick up on that. Why? Because God wants to edify you. God wants to encourage you. God doesn't want to solicit an emotional response. But God wants you to know, if you will respond and practice the art of submission, of agreeing with God, of what He said through His voice, there is a product that comes out of that. I become emotionally attached. I want to hear His voice over and over again. How many times have you wanted to hear somebody give you a call? I wish they'd call me and tell me they appreciate what I did for them. I'd love to hear them call me and tell me, I love you. I want to hear that voice. And in our hungering to hear that voice coming from others, there's always the voice of God. comes to us on a regular basis if we practice the art of submission. Maybe that's just where I need to stop. 
Too many in the church do not practice the art of submission. And they let the enemy come along and tell you, you never were anything to God. You never will be anything to God. You're just a loser. You always have been a loser. You always will be a loser. You've got nothing to offer God. You've got nothing to offer the world. And that's all there is to it. And they will let that voice override the voice of God that says, I love you. I created you. I didn't make you to just let you flounder on this thing called earth until you just croak. I didn't do that. I didn't make it that way. That's not how it's supposed to be. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It all depends on what voice we choose to listen to. It's not just enough to hear the word of God. Am I listening to the voice of God? The voice carries so much. The spoken word carries so much information. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says today, if you will hear his voice. How many times have people, you know, you, you're, you're trying to get some information across to somebody, or somebody's trying to get some information across to you, and, and the response is, yeah, I heard what you said. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I heard what you said. Spirit of the Lord speaks to you. Is that your response to Him? Is that your response to God? Yeah, I heard what you said. You see, He's gonna, God's gonna keep coming back and speak to you words of encouragement, words of I love you, words of I care for you, words of you're important to me. God will continue to say that. No matter how many times you push it away, that's still God's voice. That's the that's the the, the meaning. That's the uh, that's the soul. That's the the impetus of it. That's that's how God speaks to us. He speaks to us in a way that lets us know this is not play acting. We are we are in a situation where. We desperately need to hear the voice of God speaking to us in such a way that we pick up on the inflection. We pick up on the resonance. We pick up on the meaning. you begin to talk about voice tone of voice <laughs> parents to children don't you use that tone with me mm -hmm. God to us don't you use that tone with me and, and, and why do parents tell children don't use that tone with me because if you use that tone with somebody else you're going to get a really negative response Oh, they'll know your voice. They'll know who you are. And they'll know what kind of tone comes out of you. And some people just warm themselves thinking that I want them to think that way about me. You know why to do that? Because the art of submission seems to be just too far out of reach. The art of submission just seems to be something that would make them way too vulnerable. The art of submission says, if I do that, there's not going to be anything left of me. Well, we saw the demonstration of what that really means when Sister Carter had the, had the, 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 the clear jar. It was 
clear water. Got filled up with all kinds of junk. The Spirit of the Lord doesn't, doesn't wait for you to empty yourself out before He fills you up. He fills you up and all of the other junk begins to flow out. And we think, well, if I let, if I lose all of that garbage out of my life, there's not going to be anything left of me. No, you need that garbage out so that you don't rot when you speak to somebody else. The rottenness of your tongue comes across. Voice carries timbre, spelled T-I-M-B-R-E. In music, it's called the resonance. When God speaks, we resonate. Where do we resonate? We resonate in here. When God begins to speak to us, there's a there's a resonation. That's that. I feel something on the inside. I don't know what it is. Bob, i got to go to your church. Find out what this is all about. Before I, before I knew that it was God speaking His love to my soul, I recognized the voice of something that was speaking to me, telling me, I love you. I care about you. You're important to me. I'd love to have you in relationship. Would you come into my kingdom? I heard that voice. I heard those words. I heard that invitation. And after I began to experience more of how reliable God is, I began to say, I'm, I'm going to listen to that voice. Because it resonates truth in my soul. There's the pace of the voice. God doesn't speak so fast that we can't pick up on it. God speaks at a pace that we can pick up on it. I know sometimes I get carried away up here. And the Lord says you need to go a little bit slower. Why? Because it's important that everybody hears the voice of God in the preached word of God. The cadence. I want my cadence to be God's cadence. Sometimes it sounds like a marching cadence. We're going over the, we're going to leave the city gates. We're going to go through the valley. We're going to march through that next hill. And the spirit of the Lord is going to go before us. And the enemy that was before us is going to be discomfited before we ever get there. And we will march on to victory with God. Sometimes the cadence is a cadence of victory. Sometimes the cadence is a cadence of carrying a wounded individual into a place of safety. It, the voice carries the cadence. The inflection in the voice. I've talked about this many times. You, you can look at somebody and just say... I love you. Well, there was an inflection there. Now, how many ways can you say, I love you? I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Depends on where you put the emphasis in that. And when God speaks, his inflection is unmistakable. His, and, and I've got to be, I've got to let that inflection move through me with how, how I present myself, what I say to people. And I have to, and I practice that, the fine art of submission, that God, I know what was going on in my mind. My flesh was trying to say something that I know was not going to be the way you would like to say it. God, I'm going to submit myself to say it your way rather than have it my way. Timing. God's timing is impeccable. God's timing is absolutely right on time. And if 
we have practiced the fine art of submission to hear the voice of God during our daily prayer time. If we practice the fine art of submission to hear the voice of God, when we think our life is worthless, useless, over, done with, I don't need, I don't want to do this, I don't want to submit to that, I don't want to do this, I don't want to be that way. God, why can't I have it my way? If I will practice the fine art of submission, when I'm in the midst of irritation and aggravation, then when the unforeseen phone call happens, or when the individual shows up at my door, or when there's a prayer request that comes my way, I'm going to be more of a mind to have the voice of God coming out of me. Because I will have practiced the timing of God every day. In the voice, the voice carries meaning. Through all of these things, the voice carries meaning. Somebody can stand up in the theater and yell, Fire! And they just mean to cause havoc. Or the lights can go on and usher can come down the aisle. The, the, the theater is, is off. The usher comes down the aisle and says, Everybody, there is a fire in the house. We need to leave this way to get out of the danger of the fire in the house. And, and, and if you will go out this way, everything is going to be all right. But there is a fire in the house. The meaning is clear. The inflection is clear. The timing is clear. The tone is clear. The voice says there's danger. Would you get out of the danger? God comes along and says, this world is not your home. This world is subject to destruction. The way of the flesh is the way of death. And the Spirit of the Lord comes along trying to give us warning to Flee into a place of safety. There's tremendous meaning in that. And the emotion. The voice carries the emotion of God. The yearning. The desire. The passion. The admonition. The rebuke. The warning. They're all used to convey a mood, an intention, a desire, a message, an encouragement, a warning, an atmosphere. And God will use all of that to help us understand what He's trying to communicate to us. Verse 8 of Hebrews 3. Following on, because th th this is a carryover from Psalm 78. I'm sorry, not Psalm 78, but Psalm 95, found in Hebrews 3. This is Psalm 95, probably written a couple of, uh, maybe, uh, you know, 1,400 years before the apostles using it in this particular passage here. Psalm 95. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation that said they do always err in their heart and have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. How did they not know the way of God? They chose not to listen. God led them into a place they were uncomfortable with and they chose not to listen as to what do I do with this situation. I mean, take a look at what God told Moses when, when God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Moses saw the fire, heard the voice, heard the words, got the message. Moses said, I, you know, I don't speak very well. And the Lord said, well, who made the deaf and dumb? Who made the sight and blind? Who made everybody just the way they are? Because God knows just what this world is going to need, need coming from you. practice the fine art of submission God can use me 
Duval practiced the fine art of every day with you, Lord, is sweeter than the day before. The hurting souls, the people that have been deceived, the people that are under the thumb of the enemy can be recovered from that if I will practice the fine art of submitting myself to hear the voice of God and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to let your love just sweep through me and flush out all of the junk that you know is in there. And I'm going to tell you what, when it happened to me, I had no idea just what that junk was all about. But I'll tell you what, when the refreshing came from the Spirit of the Lord, when the refreshing came from God, I became fresh in the eyes of the Lord. And I discovered there were some things that were just gone out of my life. And they haven't come back. You know why? I don't want them back. Right. You want your anxiety back? Go grab it. You want your paranoia back? Go grab it. You want your misery back? Go grab it. Oh, well, it'll be happy to come back in. Because the flesh will pat itself on the back because now I've got an excuse why I can't live for God. Now I got an excuse why it's just too hard. Now I got an excuse why this is why I can't be faithful. This is why I can't do what God asked me to do. Now I've got an excuse to just be the be the type of person I always knew I was. I know I'm worthless. Who told you you're worthless? Come on, who? Who told you you're worthless? Who? It's not God. And if you keep telling yourself you're worthless, what kind of a voice are you going to use when you're speaking to others? I'm worthless, you're worthless. Fighting a long, long battle to help people have life in that more abundantly. God gave us a garden full of promises. God gave us a garden full of promises. Isn't that what he, where he put Adam and Eve? Gave, gave them a garden full of promises. God gives us a garden full of promises. Let me read this before I, before I close. The soul of every person hears the voice of God. If you're going to be a minister, if you are striving to practice the fine art of submission to God, everybody you encounter will hear the voice of God coming out of your life. That's a high responsibility. That's a, it's, it's not just a high responsibility, it's an awesome, awesome privilege. Do I want them to hear me? Don't we have enough people out there in the world around us that want their voice heard? There is a voice that the world needs to hear, and it's the voice of God speaking to them, and it can happen through us. Every... The soul of every person hears the voice of God. God's voice resonates in the soul. God's voice speaks within us and influences the heart and mind. The individual makes choices about how to react to the voice of God.
voice of God speaks of things we never saw. It speaks to us of experiences we've never witnessed. It speaks to us of travels that we've never endured. It speaks to us, speaks to us of places that we never went to. That's what the Bible is all about. It talks to us of all of those things. And in that, and in the Word of God, it also talks to us of things, experiences, travels, and places that are in the future. Well, I know where I'm going, do you really? I know what tomorrow. I know what's going to happen tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And do you really? No, 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 no. I want to hear the voice of the Lord saying, "I've got your pathway mapped out, because the steps of a righteous person are ordered of the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I'll direct your path. But if you don't acknowledge God," That every day is a humdrum whatever, just like the day before. The voice of God talks about things, experiences, travels, places that are in the future. What we will see, what we will experience, what roads we will travel, and what places we will go to. Depend on what voice or voices we hear, listen to, and ultimately decide to follow. Amen. 